who wants more reefing this is Alex Wilson right here and I've got more of the good the bad and the ugly this is my daily video log where I am giving you the daily details where you can hopefully learn from my mistakes as we go and so today I have a couple items here that I got off of Amazon my float uh, valve and well as, as the safe fit, fail safe valve for uh, uh, you know reverse osmosis uh, system so let's check it out all right so here's the system I got right here off of Amazon and this is uh, pro looks Chinese brand this is a UFO it says on it However, there's lots of, uh, well, several different uh, of these types of float valves that are available on Amazon. And so I got this for the 20 gallon quarantine system. And I'm going to see if it'll work for me. And one thing you could definitely say about this one is that it really is nice and compact. And it should fit nicely up on top of the 20 gallon system right where I don't have much room for anything and so really nice about that and it has a nice little uh, just fits right there on straight on the top of them which is nice because that's the way I have it a lot of them you know are uh, have the ability to adjust them downwards like for a sump or for a lower water level yeah like for in a sump but in my case it's just on the straight top just like straight normal aquarium and therefore they have this one right here ready to go and um, it wasn't expensive, so you know, and it's also uh, well, it has a small screw there, but it supposedly is uh, salt water safe, and so it's, it's covered with plastic anyway. And so, it also comes with a valve and you know, a little elbow there as well, so it's pretty good. I'm checking that out. And then, like I said, I also have right here this is my fail safe uh, RO leak detector valve. And this is how widely available for all uh, reverse osmosis systems. And I'm going to be putting one on just my underneath the sink where I have my reverse osmosis uh, system, such that you know it'll be there too as well if there is a leak down there because I already did have a leak right there. So I wish I would have this on there actually already, but it looks pretty nice because it just goes like this and. Uh, once this it comes with these little uh, cotton balls right here such that if it gets wet it expands and it opens up the valve like this and that closes it off completely so the flow of water stops so it's, so the water goes through here and then it's going to go through the float valve so it'll turn off the water completely and like I said not that you know I wanted you know ideally to have a float valve that has the output you, not just the input but the output instead of just falling down right there that it ha actually have an RO connector on it right there which would be really nice to be able to connect the the, ex the exit of the water there to have it in line that way you could have one float and have the other float slightly higher than the other one and this way when one shuts off um, it will in fact just go up until the next one and then that one will in fact still function and then turn it on and off as normally but yeah there it is so I'm going to be putting this one on the sump right there on the main display the water's going to go up it's going to hit this and it can't really fit this well on you know on my quarantine system over here because it doesn't have much space for that the float I'm going to try to put it right up here in the back right there and have it going right there and uh, you know, unless I were to go we'll see how it works, but it doesn't look like it would be enough room with, you know, have the water lower and then have that leak detector fit up there. It might work. I'll have to try it out. But plan B would be to put this leak detector just straight on the floor where I know it's going to be leaking out if it does leak. And so not ideal, but at least, you know, if it does happen that way, it should shut off the the system if it does if it does if the float does stick on right it sticks on and then floods out onto the floor then it will shut it off and I could definitely see this as well for putting you know that cute uh, well small little float valve like that onto the 
back of an of an all-in-one system um, you know and you could fit right in the back of the area of the all-in-one like the sump area of the all-in-one and uh, something like that would work really nice and then if I was building my own all-in-one aquariums uh, you know obviously you would want to build into it the dual redundancy there that's right I have two float valves you know one slightly higher than the other one one fails well the main one fails and then the other one will catch it your fail safe so seems pretty e easy in theory but there it is okay guys so this is the next day here and I have in fact did alkalinity yesterday I overdosed alkalinity on this one that's the thing dumped it straight in there thinking that the this auto, this uh, manual doser was closed and I had this bottle and then the whole thing was open so I dumped just the whole bottle all upside down and dumped I don't know how much off a reef in there I could have overdosed it by a couple hundred percent or so but I did a 50 percent water change on it and then I tested the alkalinity alkalinity is at 10 dkh so one degree higher than what I rented at I rented at nine and so then I tested it again today and it's back down to 9.1 so ooh, fingers crossed on that one I didn't add as much as I had feared but I'm gonna be taking a you know keeping a close eye on it testing alkalinity on it daily here for at least a week just to make sure that all of that off reef doesn't start kicking in late doesn't catch it and bumps the alkalinity up super super high and kills everything dead but good news is that everything is still alive thus far and uh, let me see here let me it's gonna turn off the flow let me go ahead and turn off the flow on this one so we can check it out and get a top-down view at least a little bit here I'm on the, there's the golden clam right there the shot of the clams really quick little little bit of glare but get a shot of the other corals and everybody up here so yep yeah, hopefully they'll, they'll make it from that uh, off reef overdose you know that can happen with anything of your uh, two-part overdosing your two-part certainly have the same problems there's a shot of the gold clam right there they can certainly get him better shots of him with uh let me turn off this fan with uh there we go if he was closer up to the front you get some you could see him a lot better but i got him back here i'm just leaving him alone no he's cool he's oh he's got nice mantle extension so i'm just leaving him alone right here and there's his nice golden color and uh, maybe not quite as uh, strong of a gold as some of the other ones, but yeah, it's definitely a nice gold, certainly from the top down. And look, or you know, it might change as it grows. These crosseas, I think they might change their coloring as they mature. Here's a uh, front, Let's see if here's the front shot of them. Just looks kind of uh, more of a lightish gold from this shot. But everything else in here is doing well. Got good public extension right here on this home record and the Walt Disney. And the uh, rainbow splices are looking better. So happy about that so far. And uh, yeah, so everything else seems to be, should be coming back now from this, uh, well, it's overdosed and then this whole brown slime, brown slime attack on everything, dinoflagellates, uh, cyanobacteria, I don't know, brown slime, fuzzy mushrooms back there are still closed up. Oh yeah, last time, by the way, I was talking about these weeping willow soft uh, toadstool leathers and just to clarify, the one I got from Unique Corals, I mean, it, it, uh, it wasn't technically a green one but you know it was the super super uh, well it was the three to four inch long like tentacles on it number one but it was like it did kind of appear like the 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 ends at the tips of the tentacles were 
white under the white light, but under the tinic light, they were a nice little light green, so that's what I was referring to, that they are in fact under the tinic light, a light green, and this is the same way, so it does have the same color tentacles, if you do that, but unless this one's going to grow out longer, the whole polyp was, uh, the polyps were much, much longer, you know, it was so it was like the same size um, head as this one, but then would come out to a softball size at least, you know, spreading out everywhere, it's just hitting this tentacles on absolutely everything, so that's, so I think this one is definitely a smaller, a smaller variety. There's a good close up of those white tentacles on the toadstool, so it's like that. The ends were about like that on the same color, just under the tinic, a nice light green. So, and then this, uh, finger leather right here or colt, colt leather and this one has a little bit of a light green polyps on them and the pink bases and and the brown weeping willow by the way is not brown it's the pink the pink weeping willow that sounds so much better right guys pink weeping willow all right let's see if it catches on just like all the other pink corals out there including uh the acroporas see most of the time the Slightly brownish ones, of course, they're either red, though the red, red this, red that, or the pink, pinks, acroporos, so it just sounds better, looks better. Alright, so everything's looking okay over there. And here's the display today. Everything's doing pretty good on this one. Covering back from the brown slime in my coral scrubber underneath it. And so yeah, everything's looking doing pretty well in here for now. Letting the back glass go wild. Hopefully it's gonna get covered up with coralline algae. If not, it's just gonna be more of just a rock, just wild type, and the yellow tang's liking it on the back, eating all of the algae that's growing off the back. So happy with that. And clam hammocks, they're still there. It looks like they're latching on pretty well. Except for the purple one the way he's pushed himself back a little bit off this one. But other than that, it's been good so far. And shot of my gold one right here. Same thing. Attached, but he still spins all the way around. One day he's like this. Next day he's facing the other direction. But looks nice and healthy. And good mental extension right there, so happy about that. Right, yellow thing? Alright, what else have we got in here, yellow thing? Everything's cool? Got. Oh, yeah, well, I, uh, I fed these guys their tuna, so this guy's looking uh, extra. Got extra pop extension as well as the Icantophilia and the uh, Heliophilia. Fungia in the back. So they're, they're nice and fat and sassy, especially the heliofungia. He seemed like he was when he just skipped a week on feeding them suddenly. He's he's down a notch, but same with the bubble corals. Get them like the extra food. Alright guys, so I guess that's it. You just check out a uh, little bit of the um, of the corals over here, you know, and see what see what we can see enjoy the candy <laughs> what do we call it uh enjoy the visual candy here so just just checking out that what this is the elegance it still has some burn tips down here we're starting to grow back but they're still that's why i'm missing the tentacles right there so i think that was from overfeeding so look out for that definitely Right now I'm just doing one fourth of the recommended dosage of the Reefroids, and that's what I'm going with for now. Um, well, in addition to the uh, dehydrated chicken manure on this one, and then on the, the my 20 gallon quarantine, I'm adding just the Reefroids. So, see how that's doing. All right, dude. Yellow thing, he, he's wanting to get in the picture again. Trying to get a shot of the hammer. There it is. 
So, looking forward to the hammer growing as well as my as the octo spawn. Oh no, octo spawn. That's the pink frog spawn. It's like a pink and greenish frog spawn. So that one's a nice one too. So not quite as fluffy as the hammer has. So lately, yo thanks. Let's get out of here. This is his corner. This your corner, dude. Let's get out of here. This is his whole aquarium. He thinks he's the owner here. All right, guys. Well, that's an update. So the uh, corals are still alive thus far after the uh, the uh, the all for reef overdose. So check back on the next update to see what has lived and what has died. Happy reefing, guys. Bye.